The reason why they love socialism so much is because of exactly kind of what we allude to. They see so much pain in this world. And my mom, I saw her picking weeds and flowers, and she was putting them in the plastic containers. And then, and then two hours later, I saw that on our dinner plate. And that's all we had. So capitalism, socialism, which one really works? And more importantly, what does the Bible have to say about it. So in this short clip, I'm interviewing Daniel Kwok, one half of the Kwok Brothers YouTube channel, who he and his brother built a real estate empire, immigrants from South Korea, and what their biblical perspective and biblical breakdown is on the difference between capitalism and socialism. So let's check this out. Let me ask you this question. Yes, um, coming from Korea, because I know when, when, when I was in the military, I was stationed there in Osan. And yes. We did, uh, we did uh, uh, Cobra Gold, which is a joint, for, uh, joint exercise to mimic as if the North Korean were reinvading uh, South Korea. D d any any memories there growing up of relatives, any North Korean relatives, mm. and any any connections there back to Korea with you? Yeah, no, so not not me personally. I'm sure mm. my grandma will have you know, a lot, lot more stories, but. But the, you know that parallel there, there's, yeah. com you know, there's communism yes. on one side, yeah. and, and, and the uh, capitalism and democracy yeah. Uh, south of that parallel, and one of my favorite pictures to depict mm. whether or not capitalism works yeah. is a night shot from space yes. of the difference between no North Korea at night, darkness, nothing Yeah, uh, uh, on the nor north of that parallel. But south of it, night shot from space, light and yes. life. This kind of tells you where... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like the, I think it's like the number 12 economy in the world. It's the power of capitalism. Yeah. So so what are your thoughts about, you know, where capitalism is in America today? Because yeah. you're a capitalist. I mean, you're Absolutely. taking capital. 100%. And, but they're talking about this whole socialistic programs that's going on in America today. And, and, and how should we as believers mm -hmm. perceive what's going on in our country th yes. through that lens? So one of, one of the big epiphanies and one of the things I've learned recently is how do we play in God's economy and okay. not man's economy? Correct. You know, how do we operate our business as if it is on earth, you know, on earth as it is in, in heaven. heaven. Yeah, nice. You know, so, you know, I'm, if anyone that watches my videos will know I'm a, I'm a very anti-socialism individual. I, I'm a big advocate of capitalism, you know, a big advocate. And the, one of the reasons why I, I'm so against socialism is because, you know, at the end of the day, it, it promotes laziness. It does, whether people like it or not. You know, I saw a quote where it says, the problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Which is, there's some truth to that, yeah, you know? Yeah. Now, I, I, I understand why people in my generation push socialism so much. Because, yeah. you know, as, I don't know if you've been noticing, but millennials, Gen Z, the younger we get, it just seems that the the popularity of socialism, especially it's, it's democratic more, socialism, yeah, is yeah. getting more and more and yeah. more and more. So the reason why I don't like socialism is because for me, I'm, I'm always around, what is the spirit telling me? Because I've learned through many hard and difficult paths and, and really through surrender that my job at the end of the day is to align with God's heart, is to walk with the Spirit every single day, to see you, Matt Zappala, as the way God sees you. And not only that, but to have God's heart for Matt Zappala, you know. And nice. to, to everybody, even you you're telling me about your buddy Patrick, right, how mm -hmm. he's, he loves asking questions. He's a, he's a truth seeker. Yeah. You know, if he was here right in front of us, I'd tell him, dude, keep seeking the truth because I believe that all truth leads to Jesus Christ. You know, and, and and you will have more intimacy with the Father than going to church on Sunday morning. Yeah. yeah. In doing so, yeah. I would actually applaud him and, and give him a high five. You know, I mean, he's six five, so I have to. You know, what I mean, I have to like, That's yeah, right. that BBD, right? <laughs> yeah, I had to go all the way up. You know, but but it, you know, if, if you look at Scripture, it how often does Jesus end the parable with you know, and it says, and the Master says, "You lazy, ungrateful servant, you will be thrown out where there is darkness and gnashing of teeth." Yeah. It's Matthew 25 right there. Matthew 25, yeah, yeah. right? There's there's three or four different parables where Jesus yeah. talks about that. Yeah. But understandably so, right, our generation and Gen Z, the reason why they love socialism so much is because of exactly kind of what we allude to. They see so much pain in this world. And then they sure. see these millionaires and billionaires, right? Or yeah. Bernie would say, millionaires, <laughs> billionaires, right? Driving around in yachts and all this stuff. And they're like, well, why don't these people just help? And, you know, we should yeah. tax them. And that's going to solve everything, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not necessarily true, yeah. right? The biggest problem that I would actually say that is occurring in America right now is division. Huge. Division. Yep. You know, it's not the United States yes. of America. That's what making America great. The United yeah. States. Everybody's together. Yeah. And I would say a lot of the problems won't be solved by the unity of, you know, black or white, uh, male and female, right? Uh, Democrat or, or conservative. I would actually say that 
a vast majority, if not all problems would be solved if simply business leaders and politicians started working together. If they started working together, I'm convinced that a vast majority of problems in the United States would be solved. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times individuals who work in you know, the public sector or work in politics, and I'm not talking down, mm -hmm. but a lot of times they don't possess the problem solving abilities that entrepreneurs have. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times entrepreneurs see policymakers as, oh, people that are just in the way. Yeah. You know, people who don't know what they're doing. People who are, so I'm convinced that there was some unity there. I think that'd be a fantastic, fantastic change. Oftentimes people watch this video and see where you're at, see where your YouTube yeah. channel's at and read your book. And people say, well, it's so, so easy for you, Daniel. It's easy for you to say that because, you know, you're well off. You got things going for you. Could you please uh, cut through the noise and yeah. tell everybody the real deal? What did you start with? How did you get your real estate investing career? Yeah. And you now your equity fund. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rolling. So, I mean, I grew up very poor. I, like I said, an immigrant, right? I mean, I, I remember getting made fun of because I'd wear the same clothes to mm -hmm. school. And, you know, I remember there was we, our parents, my family, we'd sleep in the car multiple nights, couldn't afford to pay a heating bill, well, right? You know, February, the car was hot, yeah, yeah. yeah, 100%. Was warm, yeah. You know, I remember there was one time, you know, we all went to the park. And my mom, I saw her picking weeds and flowers, and she was putting them in the plastic containers. I'm like, oh, that's cute. He must be giving it to my dad. You know, I wonder if it's their anniversary. You know, it's, it's great. And then, and then two hours later, I saw that on our dinner plate. And that's all we had, you know. So, again, fast forward 18, negative $187.65 in my bank account, maxed out credit cards. And that right there, that's how God got my attention. Because Jesus says, all right, Daniel, you know the Bible super well. And I do. I read the Bible at this point probably eight to ten times over. Sure. You know, my dad's got a doctorate in biblical studies, right? I mean, very well-educated man. Mm -hmm. And God says, it's, it's time for you to stop believing in me, and it's actually time for you to start following me. All right? It, it's, it's a mindset shift. Are you ready to actually start following me now? And I said, oh, yeah. okay. Thank <laughs> you.